This book is full of spiders. 11 hours, 45 minutes prior to outbreak. John's feet were wet. It was dark. He tried to recall where he was. Had he passed out in the kiddie pool again? Water was running over his shoulder. Hey, there's a steering wheel. Okay, so he was in a vehicle of some kind. He couldn't see shit out of the windshield. Feet freezing. Something racing past the glass. Bubbles? John's knees were getting cold now. He reached down and dunked his hand in water and thought, Oh shit, I am underwater here. Jesus, oh Jesus. His head was all muddled and he started slapping stupidly around the unfamiliar console. He turned the windshield wipers on. No effect. More bubble bursts of bubbles flew past the windshield as his, as his precious air escaped through a hundred cracks in a craft not made to be submerged. My air, thought John crazily, that is my air leaving. Belatedly, he realized the water soaking his left arm was pouring in from the partly open window next to him. He turned toward the door and took a full face of wet turkey. John shoved it aside and clutched at the door handle. He kicked at the door. It felt like somebody had stacked two tons of sand on the other side. He pushed with both feet and was shocked when more freezing water came raining in, truck filling fast. Submerged to his chest now, the cold water like needles in every muscle. John was hyperventilating, crazily trying to pull the door closed again to keep the water out. Five seconds later, he was sucking air out of a tiny gap at the roof of the truck, slurping metallic-tasting stagnant water with each breath. And then, silence. Blinking, underwater, frozen from head to toe. For the first time since he emerged from the womb, John wanted to take a deep breath and was not allowed. My last air, holy shit, I have tasted the last air of my life. The air that is in my lungs is the last air I will ever get. This is bullshit, man. Suddenly, there was open water to his left. The door that had been impossible to push open moments ago, having gently drifted open on its own. A huge bundle of connected drowned turkeys floated there. John lunged to the door, found to his horror that he was glued in place, and decided once and for all that this had to be a nightmare. Seatbelt, you still have your seatbelt on, you stupid bastard. His fingers were numb on the chilled water, making the task of freeing himself almost impossible. So dark. John realized he was seen only by the dashboard lights, which were still on somehow. He mashed the seatbelt clasp, and after an eternity felt the belt loosen. He was so thrilled by this that he was celebrated by releasing all of the air had been holding in his mouth. John watched the, his life run away from him in a swarm of silver bubbles. No, come back, my last air, come back, air. John frantically swam after his bubbles, shoving dead turkeys aside, water in his nostrils, burning. The bubbles didn't float up, but rather flew off to his left. The assholes. He chased them. Had to get the air back. Seeing lights. Brain shutting down? John swam after the bubbles and toward the lights. Then he broke through the surface of the water. He blinked water out of his eyes and saw streetlights above him. He looked back and saw a pair of red taillights, only a couple of feet under the water, like the eyes of a lurking sea monster. The water was only about eight feet deep, and he had only been about five seconds away from drowning in it. Jesus. John sloshed into the water, climbing the embankment and clawing at weeds to pull himself up, as red and blue lights twirled their way toward him from the highway. Now they show up. An hour later, John found himself in handcuffs in the back of a squad car. He had been totally unsuccessful in his attempts to impress upon the police that they needed to rope off everything in a ten-mile radius and set it on fire. He was equally unsuccessful in getting any of the cops to loan him a cell phone. His wouldn't turn on, and in fact there was still quite a bit of water dripping out of it. He needed to get in touch with Dave. Another car pulled up. Not a cop car. A flashy silver sports car. A dude in plain clothes got out, flashed a badge, and talked to the cops. Ah, finally they get the fancy police on the case. Now they'd get something done. The fancy policeman eventually came over to John's squad car and pulled open the door. You're John, right? John said, listen to me. You guys need to get to David Wong's house. John told him the address. Frankie is still alive. He's mobile and he's got shit crawling out of him. He's full of turkey now and I think he's going to Dave's place next. Now, why don't you just calm down for a moment? I take it you've been drinking tonight? No more than the usual. We're wasting time. Who brought you out here? I drove myself. I thought I'd find Frankie here and I did. What did you drive? My Cadillac. Well, it's not here. You sure, did, you, you sure you didn't come with your friend David? You two are the monster guys, right? With the website and all that? Listen to me. I think David is at his house, and if Frankie's heading there, you want to get there first. Uh-huh. Because you think Frankie will hurt Dave. Because he has shit crawling out of him. I thought you said you had heard of us. Dude, if we don't get over there and fast, Frankie is the one that's in danger.